It is a rapid. Welcome to Fentor. I'm at Newmarket Harley Davidson and they've kindly let me borrow the fantastic Lowrider ST. I'll tell you more about it as I ride it, but it's probably the best selling Harley Davidson at the moment and for a very good reason, or at least I shall find out if it's a good reason very shortly. The beauty awaits. I love the black colours of this bike with just the little bronze features. It just looks lovely. <laughs> Sounds delightful, doesn't it? Oh, like a cannon firing. Now, of course, I'm used to riding Harley Oversons with no screen. How am I going to get on with the screen? Am I going to love it? If I do, <laughs> it could be a problem, couldn't it? <laughs> but of course, um, the wind in your hair. Well, actually, you don't have wind in your hair, do you? Because you have helmets on. Before I get into this ride properly, just in case there's some mud and sludge around that spoils the looks of the bike, let's get a look at the outside. This bike is fitted with stage one. What is stage one? Well, it allows the engine to breathe properly. So the bike already comes standard, the 117, with a heavy breather. So uh, in terms of breathing in, not a problem. But breathing out, the standard exhaust does limit its ability to expel exhaust gases rapidly. So most people go for a minimum of stage one when they buy a Harley Davidson. And that is, as you can see with this bike, this is an S and S two into one, beautiful black system that matches the bike perfectly. It has, as I'm going through village here, just a gentle burble, or as we get out, we'll open it up and it makes that lovely sound. So you've got a volume control with your right wrist that's brilliant. But it, of course it allows those revs, it allows the bike to breathe, it allows you to get maximum power from the standard engine, which is a lot compared to the 114. 10% more horsepower with the stage one, a little bit more on top of that. Now I think if you to go for stage two on this, well, it is pretty quick. So the Lowrider ST has this rather lovely fairing only on this model and it really makes for a low cost bagger in terms of you know, if you want one of the uh, the ST versions of the road light that's £30,000 this is £21,000 so significant uh, saving there and uh, I'm getting up to some uh, 60, there we are, 60 miles an hour Let's have a go overtaking. Here we go. Valencia power to overtake. No issue. Maybe really there's quite a difference over the 114. But overtakeability. Okay, I'm spoiled now. I've got the 131. Big jump ahead of this, but uh, that was easy. That was easy. So I recently reviewed the 
amazing looking breakout and what a pose machine actually goes around corners pretty well doesn't inspire you to go past which is not a bad thing i guess but just like my fat bob or a fat bob this bike is the other sporty harley available so you've got the s or the st this is the st with the, the little screen and uh the s one doesn't have that so you're in the air like fat bob you got higher bars you're sitting up probably a similar position but uh this screen is working very well in fact i could feel a bit on my shoulders but helmet wise there's no pressure actually is working as it should an ex excellent deflector of most of the wind and now that the time of year has come along it's middle of may flies i hate flies get everywhere <laughs> here in east anglia eastern part of britain but there we are so we've got some corners now just some slow ones for a village how does it uh, turn in yeah that's nice that's nice good so it feels pretty similar identical even to uh, the way fat bob turns into corners and rolls around full marks for a fun bike in the corners i'm not talking sports bike abilities but for ventor abilities this is a fun fun machine i really like this little display the minimalistic display i think people have complained about complained or moaned about it other moto vloggers or whatever but it's fine it, it it's minimal and tells you your speed your rpm feel gear position that's brilliant so really for me that gets a thumbs up sitting behind the screen you've got this sort of area here that's keeping quite a wind off my sides very well the top of the screen that's blowing the air over the helmet quite nicely but sort of normal road speeds as i'm going now um there's a little bit of wind on my shoulders here and here but you know this is a, a seriously good mini you could say a mini bagger but it's got the same extra big lump the biggest lump you can get from harley davidson on a bike 117 or the biggest lump you can get off the shelf you could say in a road a bike ready to ride out so the road i'm on now i call the new market tt i've used it before shown in other videos it's a route that has some fantastic corners so if you come to new market i recommend this i'll put a map up to show you but just a superb route really is with a cafe which you will attend uh, in a little while <laughs> you're honestly not going to be disappointed with the power of the 117 in the lowrider st still you might want to upgrade to stage four like i've done with that bob which is even more insane but to be honest this has enough look at that Whoa all in top gear What's nice about this road, there's no centre line, so it is a bit like a racetrack on the road. Racetrack, but that's, that's a road. Look at that, look at that. Oh, lovely. I like the uh, overrun sound from this pipe. It does crackle away, as you can hear, I'm sure. But going for a village now, a small throttle opening. It's quite quiet. It's actually not too bad. It's not too loud at all. But it is loud when you want it to be. Yeah, we are. Going fourth gear on the twisty road. And that is giving a lot of thrust when I need it. Third gear into this nice corner around get the vision and then we'll open it up that is a rapid beast <laughs>
So on this bike we have mid controls, or what most people would consider a normal sort of control position. So that's how it comes as standard. It's considered to be more of a, a sporty riding position. Um, yeah, you, you're sitting up right here with these nice handlebars, which are very, very well positioned for me. Um, the legs are back a bit. I pre much prefer the full controls um, that are, are standard on my fat bob. But don't let that put you off buying this. If you want full controls, it's going to cost you a little extra, but they'll put them on from the day you own the bike. So, I don't know how much extra, a few hundred quid extra few hundred pounds sterling anyway for those who don't know what quid means and uh you that haven't got the full control so that's that's the mod i would do if i was buying this bike day one get the full controls but i have to say i'm not uncomfortable my knees are up a little bit i've got quite long legs so i think if you're not as tall as me but you might be quite happy with the mid controls it's not a reason not to purchase the bike Either which way, you have what you want. And that's the great thing about Harley Davidson. You can have the bike exactly as you want it, with no issue. The Lowrider ST. It's a great bike. I'm really enjoying it. And there's some quite big differences between Harley Davidson's. I know a lot of the engines are the same, they look the same or look similar, but they are different bikes. The way they work, the way they ride. This has a lot of similarities to Fat Bob in terms of the way it corners. It's planted, it's stable. It's a, it's a fun bike on a twisty road. It's got, of course, I say of course, it's got twin discs at the front, plenty of stopping power, no issues there. Now I mentioned that the mid controls um, here instead of at the front, I prefer full controls. But you might recall on one of my previous videos when I tested out the breakout, the heavy breather, which uh, this bike has, got in the way of my leg. With the mid controls, no issue. The heavy breather is not a problem. You have these really nice panniers that come as standard. You can fit a reasonable amount with care in these. Um, but of course, you can soon pop on uh, a, a passenger seat. This doesn't have a passenger seat. So it's just a very simple swap out with any Harley Davidson to swap that seat for something else. You could have a city bar with a rack, just move the number plate a little bit and all would be very good for having a, you know, a box on the back here as well. You've got a big fuel tank, much bigger than Fat Bob. So at least 200 miles range if not more. Uh, I'll put the litre volume above so you can see. So this is really quite set up to do some touring. The screen's working very well. In fact, I think it's better than, well, it's, it's not just a small dinky screen to look cool, which it does. It is effective. It's keeping the wind off the top of my head. It's keeping the wind off my sides, just getting a bit on my shoulders. In fact, it's probably similar protection to my R1250 GS BMW. Not a lot of difference because I get wind here with that bike. If you go for a road glide or the street glide, then you're going to have proper protection all over. No wind at all. This bike weighs a lot less than the big touring bikes from Harley Davidson. So you're looking at these kilograms compared to, for instance, a road glide, these kilograms. That's a lot of difference, considering you've got the 117 engine. So the acceleration, you've not got the extra weight there. This is fun. You can tour, have fun, and it's not horrendously expensive. So this, at the time of filming, is £21,000 on the road. Now, you have cruise control, you've got that fairing, you've got the 117 engine. Really, just a bit of money on an exhaust, so you're looking at about another thousand, fifteen hundred pounds maybe to spend. 
You have to consider there's the Lowrider S, which doesn't have the bags or the fairing, which I reviewed last summer, which is a lot of fun too. A bit like Fat Bob, there's no screen protection. But this is adding not that much extra money, around £1,500, I think. All this lovely fairing and those bags. I think it's a bargain extra, and this is probably the bike of choice out of the two. What upgrades would I make if I was buying this bike? Well, of course, I'd do exactly this. Stage one minimum. I would go for stage two, which is a cam as well. So you're looking at a couple of thousand extra for those those modifications. That would give you another 10% more torque and pull. I don't think there's that much else one would want to do. You could go for some graphics or design features, but I like black. I like the look of this bike. You've got the bronze graphics, Harley Davidson on the tank. You've got the bronze wheels. On the engine, you've not got excessive amounts of chrome. You've got black up here where it's chrome on the Fat Bob or many of the other Harley Davidsons. You've got the chrome push rod covers here, which I think would be nice in black. But of course, unless you're getting other mods done, like the camshaft, probably not worth what worrying about. But if you're getting the camshaft changed to a stage two, why not go for those in black or some something different? just to stand out from the crowd. I'd of course have a passenger seat, sissy bar, rack on here. Becomes a proper tourer then. Um, what else? Probably not much else. It's a sorted bike. You've got the lovely s, &S exhaust, which doesn't just improve performance. I think it, it looks absolutely spot on for this machine. That two into one. It's letting the engine breathe, but it looks good, it sounds good. And that burble on the overrun, that's quite addictive. Right, <laughs> I'll go to head to find some bacon sandwiches. Going to sit, put on my summer gloves. Uh, quite a lot of space in these panniers. Nice sort of smooth operation to open them, which is good. A simple lock and you can lock, well, clasp lock here and then you've got lock for each one so keeps it keeps stuff secure when you're parked. Lovely road ahead. There are potholes to avoid in Britain this year. Everywhere seem to come up in places you'd never expect them. Someone has to be quite alert uh, when riding. So I'm now just really enjoying going steadily in sixth gear, a beautiful country road, not a lot of traffic, enjoying the views, the scenery, the fairing doing a brilliant job of keeping the wind off me, but I've got enough air, which is great. I've got the torque of the 117 from low res, pulling very hard, no issues at all, just cruising. This is a comfortable place to be, I have to say. Even with the big controls, I'm comfortable. I've not really got a big problem. I think you could go a long way on this bike. It's very comfortable. The fairing's really keeping most of the air off me brilliantly well. I really think you could go a long way. You could easily tour on this. And certainly a 500 mile day, not out of the question. My bottom's quite comfortable on the standard seat. Though, like I say, I would put in a, a seat with a passenger backrest. There are many, many seats available for that long distance comfort. So this bike is going to be great for going long journeys, going to rallies, whatever. Brilliant piece of kit. One of my favourite things on a motorbike, or car for that matter, is cruise control. It's just here with the Harley, you press it to turn it on, and then you knock it downwards like that. And there we are. A bit cruising. So, uh, that to me is a brilliant feature. And uh, it can be retrofitted to Harley Davidson's that don't have it. Uh, my Fat Bob didn't have it as standard, so I had to had it retrofitted but uh, it's a standard option on here so if you like cruise control 
This bike has it. Mega. This bike, as you can see, it's in black. You can get it as standard in grey as well, which looks quite nice. I like the black, personally. Um, black's very popular. <laughs> it's a Harley Davidson colour, and you can tell why, because it looks always looks good. However, there are some limited edition ones. One this year with this sort of red delivery. Yeah, it's okay. But there's a new one that's just come out. I think they've sold out already. Which is the blue and white, like Carol Shelby colours. Uh, that that looks quite cool. That looks quite cool. I actually uh, think that's quite nice. Uh, would I buy that for the extra money above the black? I don't know. I'd probably just stick with the black. I'd probably go for this in black and then go for other modifications. A bit like my Fat Bob with the orange bits on the engine. Just sets it a little bit apart. Get rid of any chrome. And uh, that, I think, would be my preferred route. Anyway, I think it's hungry. And up here is Cafe 33. I've really settled into the Lowrider ST today. You know, I'm getting a really good feeling for this bike and what it's all about. It's about several things. Performance. Harley Davidson performance. It's a machine that goes round corners well. It rewards you with a turn in. It makes you smile on the twisty road. It's got the performance of that 117 engine, stage one, as in the case of this one. More than adequate power, honestly. <laughs> said the man who's got stage four. This fat bob. This screen that really works well. I'm really impressed with that. The bags, you've got a reasonable amount of space. I wouldn't say they're huge, but they open nicely. They look good. And I think if you're touring, you can put a top box, not top box on, but you know, like a city bar and another bag on there, you can carry all you ever need, or well, all I would ever need anyway. I think for tour touring. And maybe, you know, you're going to argue over who has the most underwear. <laughs> so you might need a road glide or street glide if you're going for two-up touring. Um, or even the limited uh, Harley Davidsons. But they're going to be heavier. They're not going to be as responsive as this. And they're going to cost more. Like I say, the ST version of the road glide is 30000 This is £9,000 less. So you've got a lighter bike, the same engine. So you've actually got a better performing bike than the Rogue Glide. Basically, you don't have a radio and all those sort of things. You've got a smaller screen, but this works. It really works. So uh, I love the look of the Rogue Glide. I think it looks the dog's doodahs. Uh, my favourite looking Harley. But this fairing has grown on me. When it first came out, I was thinking, oh, it's a retro but actually with the light that single light in there it's got that lovely ring um, to it it looks good and as I say in all of my videos you know bike has to look look good you have to like the look of it um, and I think this is a good looking machine I think I want to do more to it if I if I bought one a bit like I've done with Fat Bob now, which took me nearly five years to do. The orange bits and uh, getting rid of the uh, chrome. Now I've done that, I really think, wow, why didn't I do that earlier? But anyway, you, well, you do like I've done. You buy this bike, you do a few extras, you maybe go stage one, stage two, rack, extra seat for a passenger, whatever you want. And uh, enjoy it for two or three years. But don't part exchange it. Then upgrade to a stage four. Cheaper than a new bike and big smiles. The Lowrider ST, a fantastic bike from Harley Davidson. I've gone through the things I would change, but please do comment below and let me know what mods would you make if you bought this bike? Would you go stage one with that exhaust? Would you put forward controls on that this bike doesn't have? Would you stick with the mid controls? Would you add a rack? Would you do? Tell me what mods you do. 
because Harley Davidson is all about changing stuff and making it personal to you, personalizing your bike. No other brand offers you that. And if you were liking the look of the Lowrider ST, why not get yourself a test ride with your local dealer? If you're here in East Anglia, give Newmarket Harley Davidson a call. Get down here, ride these lovely Suffolk and Cambridgeshire roads, get a bacon roll, just like I did, and you're gonna be a very happy person. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.